Okay, good morning. Uh, so my name is uh, Rafael Rinaldi. Um, so first of all, I would like to really thank uh, the CEA team and the Jump to Excel project uh, team for inviting us and for inviting Cap Energy today to present this uh, FlexRead program. Um, so I have seen you, you have an amazing program. So with a lot of visits and a lot of projects will be presented around the FlexRead environment. So that I'm really, really glad to, to see that uh, we can show a lot of things about this uh, amazing project. So uh, Flex, what, first of all, a few words about uh, Cap Energy because maybe uh, many of you will not uh, uh, know a lot about uh, what is Cap Energy. So uh, in, in France, we have uh, uh, 56 uh, clusters of uh, different clusters, which are called pole of uh, pole de compétitivité. So there are clusters to um, gather a network of uh, small enterprises, uh, small and medium enterprises, startups, and to make um, the bridge between those uh, small entities and uh, also local authorities, universities. And so this is uh, to foster the innovation. So. Cap Energy is engaged in the energy transition and uh, the, the idea is to create <coughs> the new competitive energy systems for a decarbonized society. Uh, so Cap Energy is a small team, we are around uh, 20 people located in Aix-en-Provence and Nice and we are acting uh, in five territories with more than 320 members and more than uh, 50 100, uh, 500 members, if we count on all, all the members like universities, uh, local authorities, etc. And uh, one to more than 1,800 partners. So five territories, the region south mainly, but not only the region uh, south of France, but also Corsica, Guadeloupe, Ile de la Réunion, and Principauté of Monaco. Uh, we are active in three uh, strategic domains. Uh, first one is to decarbonize the energy use and improve the energy efficiency. The second is to optimize and secure the local energy systems. So also isolated areas, so it's perfectly, perfectly in line with the context of our workshop today. And the third one is to produce decarbonized energy. Uh, and the, the main mission of, of Cap Energy is to drive and to steer a structuring program which is FlexGrid. So, why FlexGrid? First of all, there was a national challenge. So, some years ago, in 2016, the region south with Cap Energy, th um, supported by Cap Energy, was awarded for this program, FlexGrid to deploy, deploy at large scale the, um, the smart grids, technology smart grids uh, projects in the south of France, in the region PACA. And um, why this? First of all, um, there was, um, we observed that uh, from 2002, more, almost uh, 1,950 smart grid projects were <coughs> in execution overall, over the whole uh, uh, in Europe. And uh, we thought that we must industrialize the smart grids technologies and to create uh, a real uh, cluster and to make this, uh, this uh, smart grids a reality. So I think also Antoine presented this, the, the particular situation so why south of France? Because it was like a peninsula-like energy system. So uh, with a few uh, interconnections with the neighboring regions. Uh, presence of highly variable demand according to temperature and population trends. Widespread intro introduction of PV solar systems. And so on a high energy dependence with the neighboring regions. Uh, some projects were already deployed in, uh, in, in the south of France. Premio, which is the first demonstration project and wa was awarded at international level. 
and nice grid which was run uh, mainly by uh, enedis which is the french the main main french dso um to implement a smart district in uh, in the in the nice area um so what is the Flexoid program? It is led by the Région Sud, PACA, and uh, supported by Cap Energy for the, the management of the project, let's say. And uh, this project was created with a lot of partners. Um, among them, of course, the CA, EDF, NADIS, but also territories and local authorities were part of this program, which made this stronger because we had this, the political support to, to bring forward this project. And this was key. Um, and then we have a lot of stakeholders, uh, mainly three, more than 300 companies were um, part of this project and uh, 300, today 300 um, enterprises can offer solutions in the framework of the, of the smart grids environment. So FlexGrid is a public-private structuring program led by Région Sud, and um, so it's 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 an ecosystem. We are trying to put together all the stakeholders of this ecosystem, and we have now more than forty projects, forty-three projects, uh, divided in four categories that I will introduce just after, and representing a total amount of three hundred and forty millions of euro of investment. Among these, the TSO, RTE, and NEDIS, the DSO, are um, anticipating the installation of smart technologies representing more than 30 millions of euros in the South to prepare, the, 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 to accelerate the installation of those smart grids technologies and smart grids, and to foster the acceleration of smart grids projects. Um, on top of that, we also have horizontal actions, like uh, the creation and the activities on data, which is really important. So we have a lot of data, and uh, thanks to the digitalization, we can create a lot of uh, new values and new services. Um, but also we have horizontal actions like training, internationalization, awareness of society, cybersecurity, and actions to mobilize enterprises, startups, and other uh, stakeholders. So how FlexGrid projects are built? We are starting from technical pillars, but the idea is not to develop the technology, it's to use the technology to create, uh, in, to make innovation based on the integration of those technologies. So it's a systemic approach. We don't want to develop specific technology. We want to use major technology to create environment of, with smart grids project who can deliver and create value based on, on what we have, based on the data that we have from, from this intelligence. So based on technical pillars like renewable integration, self-consumption and self-production, energy efficiency, services re related to a flexibility of sources, e-mobility, and advanced monitoring and control. Those are the kinds of, uh, let's say, fields of expertise that we have in FlexRid. We use that to create use cases based on, on what we want where and where we want them. And uh, we make flagship projects in the region south involving two smart grid solutions locally developed and globally replicable. So the idea is to create open showcases and offer access to wider markets. So all the solutions that are then created, but solutions mean not only technology, it means new business models, for example, that can be replicated and can be replicated in other markets, in other regions, but also at international level. We have four clusters of projects addressing different markets and needs. Um, the first one is smart economy and, and uh, industry, smart territories and smart cities, smart production of renewables, and smart mobility. And all of these relies on uh, solid background 
uh, supported by, by the TSO and the DSO involved, the RT and NADs again, and also a data layer, which is the, the, the common background to make all of these uh, running in parallel. About smart economy, we have today nine projects in key economic sites. So here we have, uh, for example, data centers, which are electro-sensitive and are uh, really sensitive to, to any variation of the electricity uh, quality. Um, logistic and transport nodes and tourism areas, cold storage, transport and warehouses, Industries like aromatic industries, agriculture, agro-processing, and agro-industries. And also, of course, uh, the heavy industries like uh, faux sur mer. So um, we had a lot of different economic uh, sites, a lot of diversity. And we are lucky, I think, in this region because we have a lot of different uh, territories with a lot of different areas because we have coastal cities, we have mountain areas, and we have industry, but we have also a lot of tourism. So a lot of different use cases that can be built. Um, so here we have, we are talking about the integration of renewables, flexible loads and energy management systems of key, of those key economic sites. Then we have smart territories and smart cities. So you all know what we are talking about when we, when we deal with smart cities. So cities need to be more sustainable and inclusive, and this could be supported by smart grid projects. Islands and remote areas that are really uh, delicate and need to, be, uh, to have a particular attention to, be, uh, to, to build the future because the energy transition also um, is also uh, really important for those islands. Uh, rivers and protected territories, this is a particularity of, so of, of south of France. And Mediterranean coastal cities and mountain resorts. So we have also those projects, smart grid projects, in mountain resorts, for example. So that's, that's, I think this is unique here. Because we, we don't want to build technology, we want to build uh, projects with use cases. About renewable production, here we have large projects. We are talking about a complementarity between renewable sources that can support uh, each other between the, the different technologies, flexible production, virtual power plants, storage and conversion from power, power to X, which means power to gas, power to heat, power to water, and, uh, and, the, and the, uh, at the reverse side, X to power. So the idea is to conversion, and this is linked to the storage project, and I think you will have more dedicated presentation on this later on. Smart mobility, here we have six projects, um, mainly deployment of um, quick chargers, let's say, on large territories, especially in, uh, uh, not only on urban areas, but also in uh, peri-urban or also rural areas, and this uh, allows um, to deploy smart <coughs> intelligent management system um, to uh, coordinate the charging systems of all those chargers. A lot of chargers are installed, so the idea is to make a smart charging to decrease the impact on the network, for example, or to increase the integration of renewables or trying to, uh, to foster the injection of renewable energy the systems. Um, so we have six projects and uh, we also have projects on uh, related to the coupling between uh, small uh, renewables like PV panels connected close to EV uh, chargers. So we have some example in uh, close to here in the at Aix-en-Provence uh, Gare TGV, the train station of Aix-en-Provence and also uh, the camp uh, which is um, uh, a large uh, site uh, based uh, close, close to Aix-en-Provence, um, Aix-la-Durane, the Technopole area. So I will show you a, small, a short video on this. Does it 
Ach, no. Sorry. Today, a new way of traveling is taking hold. The growth of electric vehicles and drivers' expectations are key to this process. And because it's a real revolution, FlexGrid is preparing the next generation of vehicle recharging stations in the region sud. FlexGrid, aujourd'hui, euh, on met en place au niveau de la région sud, toujours, bien sûr, le projet IRV, qui comprend donc l'implantation d'un certain nombre de bornes de charge pour véhicules électriques, qui devrait consister à l'installation d'une borne tous les 100 km, voire tous les 50. Parallèlement, on va avoir aussi tous les usages liés euh, à la mobilité. Et là, les start-up de, no de, de notre région pourront prétendre à développer des usages. Roads in town, in the countryside, in the mountains or by the sea are being equipped to redesign mobility. And that's not all. On the road, you've got to provide everyone with supercharging options while avoiding peaks in demand. Il est nécessaire que chacun des territoires que compose la région sud puisse notamment s'équiper de d'autoproduction d'énergie grâce au soleil et cette autoproduction bien entendu de, à, va servir à alimenter les véhicules électriques. To plan for peaks in consumption that disrupt the grid, smart charging stations can be connected to all public or private operators to use locally produced power and store it too. Charging stations are smart. Cette collaboration aujourd'hui se fait notamment par un certain nombre de départements de la région sud, que sont donc le, le, le 05, le 04, le 13, le 83. Donc grâce à ce système, autour du réseau e-borne, la région sera équipée véritablement euh, d'un système euh, permettant à tout, tout, tout utilisateur de véhicules électriques de se déplacer de Genève jusqu'à Toulon ou jusqu'à Marseille. Real-time consumption data is transmitted to hypervision centers to control and optimize transmission, but also to inform drivers on the best times to recharge their cars or tell them where the nearest available stations can be found. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, il n'y a pas de contraintes techniques. Nowadays, living and getting around is about being increasingly aware of a new reality, sharing energy and air quality. FlexGrid is working to move our region in the right direction. Any questions on this? Okay. So, where we are now in the FlexRig program, it was started in 2016, and uh, among those 43 projects, uh, a lot of them have already um, uh, removed some barriers, and the first, uh, first phases were achieved. So two projects were complete and we are now creating a larger project. And um, so a lot of projects have already achieved some results. So we already have some feedback. So I, I think I uh, it's an opportunity to discuss it also and to have an exchange with you afterwards to see uh, what are the feedbacks in your country and in your projects. But before, so just um, to have a look at the benefits that we can have, uh, which benefits are which are enabled by the flex rate program, so, or by the smart grids and smart energy. In, um, so we have a lot of benefits which are ensuring quality of supply and best value for money, accelerating the deployment of charging infrastructure for electric vehicles, maximizing energy efficiency and energy reductions, allow territories to reach their energy objectives and uh, changing consumption patterns according to available renewable energy 
and allowing a massive integration of renewables. So that's um, the, the basic uh, benefits from FlexGrid. But uh, FlexGrid is also a reference program widely impacting targeted markets with a combination of um, multiple energy interacting together. So it's based on multiple renewable sourcing interacting, multi-storage, cross-sectors and cross-networks and addressing multiple objectives. New economic models, aggregated values from energy, but not only. We have seen that we can create value based on other businesses. So creating value on the energy, but also on, on the environment. For example, uh, um, uh, Smart Mountain with the ski resort will create value based on the energy that they will produce and sell but they will also create value based on services that are linked indirectly uh, to these technologies. So creating value for the, for the customers, like in e-mobility for uh, new values for uh, services which are not related to the energy. So that's really important. And uh, we are uh, creating innovative solutions emerging from startups, small and medium enterprises, combined with business as usual solutions from large enterprises and utilities. And this uh, acceleration relies on four pillars which are enabled by local authorities and local stakeholders that are engaged. And this is really important because we need to engage them to make uh, things happen, really. And um, those territories allow um, some funding so it, we can easier the access to financing and funding opportunities, provide key data for those projects and uh, try to, um, to facilitate the dialogue between policymakers and project promoters. So removing, trying to remove also other barriers like uh, regulatory barriers. Um, uh, we can also promote the showcases and sensibilize end users to new solutions. So the engagement of the end users is also fundamental. So what we, s what we observed is that if you don't engage your end, uh, end users from the beginning of your project, you will create something which is really maybe uh, technically uh, sophisticated, technically viable. But if, the, if, the, if your end user don't, don't want it or they don't, uh, they don't like it, for example, or they don't need it say, simply, it's, it, will, it will not be successful. So you will have wasted time and money. And um, so it's also important to, to engage them. And the uh, last thing is that we need to uh, disseminate and communicate business opportunities through international networks. And this is uh, possible within FlexGrid program. Uh, so after three years of program, we have made more than 850 networking relations. So between companies propo proposing qualified offers to project promoters from FlexRid and also outside now FlexRid, we are starting to trying to communicate about possible solutions outside the project. So we have organized business meetings um, within FlexRid program and we also have a management board including uh, territorial committees to engage the local stakeholders. So more than 22 projects are funding, funded, and uh, those funding comes from the region south through dedicated calls for proposals. Uh, we, make, uh, we have made more than 500 consultancies to help project promoters, but also uh, solution providers to get uh, to go to the market. And um, in parallel, Enedis and uh, RT are continuing to deploy the smart grid technologies in, the, in those networks in the area. So actions are targeting the industry, the local authorities, which are mobilized through those territorial committees. We have made the recommendations, guidelines, to help uh, local authorities to deploy smart grid re ready, which is uh, to explain what we are talking about. Uh, students and professors are also mobilized, so there is a Master Engineers for Smart Cities, Master in Socioeconomy from uh, University of Aix-Marseille, and the uh, prof professionalization of baccalaureate, BAC and BAC plus 2. 
um, from uh, in the field of electronic engineering. And this is to intensify the deployment of FlexWid. So it's not only technology, it's a program with a lot of actions. Uh, we promote those actions at national and international level. So we have seven showrooms in the regions of South. We have the participation to international forums like uh, European Utility Week, Innovative City Nice, uh, Energy Smart Energy Summit. One international symposium that we organize in Marseille is here from three years now, which is related to the energy for smart mobility. And this year was a really a success with more than 300 participants from 12 countries in Marseille in March. In March. And we presented the last uh, updates on e-mobility, but not only for the vehicle, but especially for how to, um, to support uh, the deployment of e-mobility thanks to energy solutions. So we have presented a lot of uh, different projects, uh, including uh, hydrogen, for example, uh, smart charging, vehicle to grid, and areas where we want to deploy those technologies like the smart ports, smart airports, etc. And we also have some international uh, cooperation with agreements with Spain, Quebec, Morocco, and the uh, United States, especially California. We uh, make also links, and this is also an opportunity for project promoters here to, uh, to have the chance to talk directly with the ministries, with the national authorities, uh, with the regulator, so we can talk and we can uh, discuss how to remove some regulatory uh, barriers or how to make the regulatory framework evolve in the right direction. So some lessons learned uh, from the economic point of view, we must admit that it's difficult now to reach a short term return on investment with smart grids, especially in, the, in, in France where the electricity uh, grid and the other networks are really um, reliable in the end. They are really solid and the electricity price is not so high. But this will cha could change in the future, especially from the market point of view. So the electricity price could increase. There is a lot of an uncertainty. So we must ensure to have the own the uh, sufficient autonomy in terms of energy. So when now when we plan a new land, when we plan uh, a district or we plan uh, uh, an area, we must think about how we will deserve, will deliver the energy. And this is new for, uh, in, at least in, I think in Europe, because we, we were used to rely on the historic actors like the TSO and the DSO, but this is changing. We also need, now the territories need to think about how they will also deliver the energy on their territory, how they will consume and produce their own energy. So this is really important so that there is a trend to experience new models based on that. New models with self-consumption at local level, sharing energy with neighbors, for example, and using local energy platforms and blockchains, for example. Synergies between sectors and territories like uh, agriculture and energy. For example, we can build uh, PV panels and make um, PV uh, shades on agricultural fields. So we can have both, uh, we, you can have an interaction. The, 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 in, on the one hand, you can sell the energy you, pro that you produce or you can consume it, consume it. And you can use the shade from the PV panels to help your agriculture to have the right uh, sun at the right moment. Uh, we have a lot of decentralized and multi-energy models and uh, I will uh, come back on this just uh, afterwards. And we have an evolution from energy products to project to energy services. So we are not talking about kilowatt hour anymore, but we tend to uh, create some business models based on kilowatt. And this is new. And uh, for this, um, we can also create services to solve local or global constraints on the network or for market uh, reasons. And uh, we also need to create open data enabling ser those services, which raise also a lot of issues in terms of privacy, interoperability, etc. For the industry, 
there is a specific uh, value in the sense that they can rely on long-term securization of energy prices, lower electricity bills, and uh, other benefits uh, based on services for, for the operation of the, of the grid. So, for example, capturing benefits from peak shaving by selling flexibility in retail market. And this could be translated in a, uh, more a competitivity for the industry. So the industry needs to prepare themselves for that. And they also have other benefits like the avoided uh, blackouts, which could have a, a strong economic impact, especially in the large, in the heavy industry, and a better image also. So it's a question of engagement of the industry for the energy transition. So just some, uh, to conclude some insight on future scenarios, and we had, can also debate on that, because we will agree or not. Uh, so just a recap about the evolution of the energy system. So you already, I think this is really now uh, almost traditional. So we started from uh, unidirectional, almost unidirectional flows uh, with traditional patterns. So with centralized generation, energy balancing at TS2 level, a strong uh, electricity grid transmission and uh, transport network with one way flows from transport to distribution and uh, to end users that will only consume and uh, will not produce it. So this, this is the past. So now we are already evolved towards new models where we have much more flows in all directions. So uh, much more complexity. And what's new, so when, the start, when we started to deploy smart grids, it was because we observed the inversion of flows between the distribution and the transport network, for example, but not, not, not only now. We also observe uh, interactions between networks and between uh, uh, networks of electricity, heat, gas, and even water. So if we start to converge, to converse energy from, from electricity to other sectors, we have a much more complex system. On top of that, you have all the data layers. You can imagine that the, the system is becoming a, an increasing machine. So we, this is, th and this is the future. And we need to, to, uh, to prepare the new uh, technologies, but also the new uh, software and the new systems to cope with that. Uh, w w so why this? So we had, in Europe, we had a huge increase of PV production. So just to give an overview, but I think you already, we, we have experts here, you will already know that. The PV module experience curve is like that. So we have, each year we decrease a state more than 20% the price of, of PV panels. So now we, uh, we also expect a, a further uh, decrease of 37% reduction for silicium modules prices by 2025. And um, about battery prices, so storage, uh, small storages in general, we have, uh, if you look at the last three years from 2015 to 2017, uh, there is a, a clear um, a, a share, uh, importance of, of lithium ion technology compared to other technologies. So it's, it's, it's rate, it was raised from 63% to 91% among all the energy storage breakdown based on power output. This is not based on, on capacity. And uh, also the, uh, the, the prices has decreased for more than five times in 10 years. So what's the result is that you can uh, afford it now. So even small, uh, even end users will start uh, to install them because the prices is going so it's going down you can afford it and you can think about being more autonomous and one other example uh, about the energy the balancing um, in uh, one day so this is the example an example of Germany uh, this it comes from Bluebird's source a uh, new energy outlook 2018 so if you look at uh, Germany winter day in 2020, so which is tomorrow, uh, you already have a lot of flexibility 
which are uh, trying to make the, the energy profile flat. So you can see in black the result of the, all the energy which is produced and consumed. And uh, from 11 to, five to 3 o'clock you will see a lot of PV production and this PV injection is absorbed by storage already today. And we are talking of more than 10 gigawatt. And tomorrow, if you look at the forecast in 2040, if you look at the intraday generation, we will have more than 30 gigawatt of PV production that should be absorbed by storage. So you could have, you will need short term storage to store it and to, and to re inject it before uh, 11 o'clock, let's say, and after 3 o'clock. And you will so we will also rely on uh, seasonal storage. So you have different patterns and different kinds of storage, and all of these need to be coordinated. So this is really important. And to make the link with FlexRoid program, uh, we have made a self, uh, you know, um, a simple assessment of what what could e evolve in the energy system. So between two different trends. The first is the decentralization of resources. So we started from an historic centralized energy system and we are going to a decentralized system. But not only, we, we could also have uh, some, uh, a mix of uh, solutions which are more centralized with the large PV plants, large uh, renewables, large storage. Uh, and on the, on the other side, you, we will have, we observe a lot of new uh, small energy, local energy system that goes to the uh, more decentralized system. And depending on the solutions that we deploy and how we integrate them on the energy system, we could um, uh, reinforce, we could help, let's say, the planning of the networks, or we could uh, uh, on the opposite, you could create more constraints if you don't do it correctly, if you don't deploy it in the smart manner, you will have uh, more grid reinforcement, so less grid reinforcement or more grid reinforcements. And what we observed, if you, if you look at those kind of um, uh, scenarios, in FlexRid you have a lot of projects on this uh, corner on the right hand, and the top uh, right corner, which means more decentralized systems uh, to help the energy systems to be more uh, reliant, but also to be more uh, flexible. So with less grid reinforcements. So you offering solutions to degree decrease the constraints on the grid. Uh, so this is a trend and uh, the extreme condition, the extreme scenario of this is to have a completely isolated area, isolated uh, systems. And usually some people will say, well, but this will not, this will not work. Uh, if, if we have a, a large panel, sorry, with uh, isolated grids, this will not work. We need to put them all together. Our feeling is that we will have both. We will have uh, sometimes isolated areas that will become autonomous when uh, there is enough uh, local resources to, to, uh, to comply with the, with the local constraints and the local conditions. So this is um, just to, to show what could happen and what, what you observe from, uh, from the beginning of FlexRate program. Uh, some words about the regulatory trends uh, are, there, are there barriers or are there opportunities? So in France, we have uh, advanced conditions, let's say, compared to other EU countries because we are allowed to make self-consumption based, based on uh, the own consumption on a, a single house, for example, or in a um, collective manner with more than one house as long as they are connected to the same uh, primary stations, the same um, HV, uh, MV, RV transformer. Uh, so there are some experiments and uh, we are expecting also an evolution of this, uh, these experiments thanks to the sandboxes uh, allowed, that should be allowed by, um, 
by the regulator. Uh, this is not allowed today, but we expect to have that in the in the next month or even uh, at the latest next year, we hope. So we will could enlarge its perimeter with self-consumption, so, so managing the energy at lo really local level. Uh, the evolution of grid tariffs could impact it, so in the self-consumption pattern, you are uh, sometimes uh, you can have a derogation with no taxes in terms of TURP, so the, the grid tariffs are either decreased or even sometimes uh, left out. At European level, we can also uh, mention that we have um, we, we, you will have an, uh, an impact from the directive and regulation, the new directive and regulation on electricity market designs, which uh, acknowledge now the citizen energy communities. So we are going in this direction of the local energy communities, and but at the same time pushing for more coordination between DSOs and TSO. So we see that, that something is really uh, evolving and uh, those, the, 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 what is sure is that the traditional way uh, is, 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 is now is really the past. So we need to, uh, to engage the end users in this energy transition uh, to get them on board and to make them aware of their, the possibility to become uh, actors of this, uh, of this energy transition. And uh, regulators are encouraging innovative tariffs in some countries. And uh, so we expect to have also some exchange between uh, regulators and some integration of new rules and new experiments also in our countries. And to conclude, let's say a few words about uh, what was the vision. This, this is the past as well. This was the vision for 2030 of the European and a technology platform in 2006. And if you look at that picture, it seems like a smart, smart city today. So this is, uh, we, are, uh, we have anticipated this, this scenario. So this is now, we have a lot of production from renewables, uh, some flexible generation. So we were not aware about, uh, uh, we missed, I think, in this scenario, uh, some uh, some new trends like the interactions with the networks. So now, if you look at the scenario from at the European, the new ETP is not is not called ETP anymore. It's the ETIPS Net, the European uh, Transition, um, European Technology and Innovation Platform for the smart networks and energy transition. If you look at the scenario towards 2050. It looks l much more complex, so I will not explain that. But I just want to show that the difference now that we imagine for the future is the interaction between networks. The interaction between uh, electricity, heating and cooling, gas, and the data layer, which is now uh, being deployed. So th th this is the future, and this complexity makes us think about uh, the, the future research and innovation efforts that we need to deploy to prepare that. And Flex, Flex Read is also targeting, is also promoting the, the, the evolution of, of these trends. Thank you.